He's talking about a specific use case that had we solved it prior to this week, it would have made your week this year a lot more enjoyable. But smart mobility, and specifically that last mile with public transit. And I want to talk about what we're doing with the Innovation District. So again, thank you all for being here. Uh, with Save Las Vegas, I have been working very closely with our Chief Technology Officer, Michael Sherwood, to launch our Innovation District with an emphasis on smart mobility. Of course, Las Vegas is known as being a tourist hub with a lot of conventions throughout the year for business and trade, a favorable tax climate, a low cost workforce, incentives at the state and local level, but wanted to talk specifically about what we're talking about today, which is this use case for smart mobility. Uh, just orientation, I know you know Las Vegas and you know us as a visitor hub, but this is not the only week we're busy. Any given weekend, we have an extra 200 to 300,000 people living in our city right here in the resort corridor. And that creates a lot of congestion, a lot of bottleneck. Uh, we have over 22,000 meetings annually, so this is not a unique event with CES, but really is, is an ongoing need with how do we move people in and out of the resort corridor. Last year's uh, attendance set a record, and it felt like having attended the show this week would probably set another record. A lot of exhibitors, a lot of uh, international attendees, uh, but specifically, as you, as if you've been to the, the full show, you know that automotive is really starting to overtake the show. And so with smart mobility, Las Vegas wants to play a role in that. And we're working on launching a customer briefing center to allow technology companies to do business with uh, their peers, with their suppliers, in a single location, having, having to travel through multiple locations throughout the U.S. and even internationally. Uh, and also to uh, complement what also is happening with other technology shows. Uh, what makes us unique, in addition to the visitation, we have the great tax climate and we're also an easy travel, uh, certainly from the Western US and if you traveled from the East Coast or from abroad, hopefully you had an uh, easy time getting here. We're a low cost alternative to California uh, with lower costs on the payroll. Uh, we're also lower energy cost. Uh, as well. Uh, and our labor market, while we were hit hard by the recession, has come back and we look favorable and comparable to most markets. Uh, and we also have a variety of incentives as well as abatement programs on tax. I'm running through this quickly because I really wanted to get into the business case for smart city IoT AV. And I think what we've seen at the city of Las Vegas is there are kind of two extremes. One extreme is that technology partners propose solutions uh, and provide use cases to the city that's maybe solving a problem that either doesn't exist in Las Vegas or it's at least not pervasive in Las Vegas. An another thing that we've seen in Las Vegas is that uh, technology for the sake of technology. There'll be great uh, uh, data uh, analytics for studying a problem, but again, it may not be a pervasive problem for the city. So the city actually wants to drive and have a seat at the table with coming up with the specific use cases that we want to tackle for our community. And we're really focused on smart mobility. This is our innovation district to orient you here. Uh, you see here uh, on the, uh, the bottom uh, yellow colored Northern Strip Gateway. Uh, this graphic is uh, probably fairly hard to read even on the big screen. But this is the area just essentially starting at the stratosphere and then points north, which is in the core of downtown. And this is the area that we've decided to have as an innovation district. So it's part of the resort corridor, the northern edge. But we wanted to study the core downtown. If you're familiar with the Fremont Street Experience Canopy, the Viva Vision, this is actually in the heart of downtown. Uh, and then you see there an area to the left, on the left-hand side, Las Vegas Medical District. Uh, that's an area of emphasis as well. And so what we've been looking at, we've been working on uh, mobility plan, we actually as a city have a mobility master plan uh, that we created uh, two and a half years ago to actually focus on smart mobility and that last mile. And we think we have some advantages. One is our downtown is a fairly small downtown by most metro area standards. So we have working on deploying IoT sensors and cameras and telecom equipment over a 50 city block area in the core downtown. The city of Las Vegas owns the assets. So I heard uh, my colleague from 
I believe it was Fairfax talking about the county not owning the assets. The city actually owns the assets, so that actually makes it a lot easier to deploy the technology. We own and uh, manage most of the data, but some of it also is managed by a partner, the Regional Transportation Commission of Southern Nevada. And we've, of course, been working on upgrading our fiber downtown like every major city has. We have connected intersection deployments with DSRC. Uh, so we've kind of mapped that core downtown area, as you see, with DSRC with already deployed and uh, future deployments. So DSRC uh, is uh, installed in all of these intersections. And I think one big advantage for Las Vegas is that we have a regional uh, approach. Uh, we have a fairly uh, concise government structure here. I work for the city of Las Vegas, one of four urban municipalities. And so there's not a lot of local government to connect to. But then even more important than that, we have a single regional transit authority, which is one of the bigger transit authorities in the country. That transit authority, the Regional Transportation Commission of Southern Nevada, connects the entire metro area of 2.3 million people. And so what that does is it allows us to actually have all the systems talk to each other, specific to mobility. Uh, the data is managed by the RTC, the Regional Transportation Commission, which is our transit authority, as well as our planning agency for transit. And that data can be accessed and tied into our innovation district platform. One example of this is Audi actually is able to uh, connect to the system today and actually talk about uh, when, or the vehicle, uh, vehicle to infrastructure, the vehicle can, act can actually know when that signal is going to change. Uh, certainly, it, it's maybe a convenience at this point and not a necessity, but that's just kind of uh, the tip of the iceberg as far as how that vehicle to infrastructure technology and what we can do with it. Uh, we've been trying to be an early adopter for uh, solutions. And so we've uh, established that we will partner with technology companies for proof of concept uh, projects uh, for smart mobility. And rather than deciding on, on day one or day zero, is the technology the best in class? Is it the right technology for solving a problem? We will actually go ahead and launch a POC and work with that uh, private provider to see Maybe that's not solving the immediate problem we have, but maybe it's going to solve a problem that we hadn't thought about. So we've really taken this no wrong front door approach to actually trying to implement smart mobility solutions. And so those use cases also from an economic development standpoint, which is my role, can actually bring a lot of attention to what the city is doing with smart mobility. An example of that is we've launched the, uh, last year we launched the Navi Autonomous Shuttle uh, which was the first fully autonomous shuttle in mixed traffic flow in the U.S. Uh, and we've also recently launched a partnership with NTT Data. These are some of our private partners. Uh, we've aggregated this in a kind of four clusters. One is IoT. A second is connected and autonomous vehicles. And that's will be what I'll touch on on the specific use case. Communications technology, and you see some providers there, as well as data dashboards. Uh, and NTT is our latest partner. So we're working on establishing a center of excellence for IoT and mobility in downtown Las Vegas. This is expected to launch in mid-year 2019, and it's re really allowing the private sector and the public sector co to connect and to discuss solutions, but also allow private-to-private -private interactions given the importance of Las Vegas as a meeting destination. You see here with NTT Data being an initial partner, we have a living lab where companies can actually see the technology. Obviously, a lot of this is software and back end, but some of it is hardware and front end. And so actually being able to see the hardware, uh, see what the technology is, uh, how it would integrate into a system has, has value. And of course, being connected to the meetings industry as well as uh, technology hubs in Northern and Southern California. We have AV solution deployment. Uh, we have uh, state legislation, Assembly Bill 69, that was passed allowing full testing of vehicles in real-time mixed traffic flow. We have uh, a plan to support vehicle-to-vehicle, uh, vehicle, uh, vehicle to everything uh, platform. Uh, interestingly, we have not launched yet uh, 5G, but this platform has actually worked with DSRC and 4G LTE, so we believe 5G will just enhance that. We have close agency support from the state. 
as well as the transit system, as I mentioned, and also, of course, support from our university system. So the specific use case, this was a shuttle that operated for a year uh, from uh, November of uh, 16 to October, I'm sorry, November of 17 to October of 2018. This is a shuttle manufactured by Navia uh, out of France, and uh, Keolis was the operator. And this operated in a six square block uh, uh, section of downtown, really in the heart of our uh, tourist uh, sector, and really received great reviews. Uh, we maintained uh, reviews from the passengers. They was overall rating of 4.9 out of five. People liked the, the service, they liked the shuttle. Uh, and so that was running on a continuous loop you see here on the bottom right of six square blocks. And because we had success with that, uh, we decided to expand it and we've expanded it to do our medical district. This is an area which is about a 600 acre uh, campus of both public and private hospitals and medical providers uh, just west of that uh, core of downtown in the, the tourist area. And this is a pilot uh, that we received a build grant from USDOT, and we're certainly appreciative of that, a $5.3 million grant to actually work on deploying four AV vehicles as well as 100 connected vehicles, private vehicles, with uh, dashboard technology and integrating those uh, vehicles into the system so that we could really start to solve this last mile problem. Any medical district, you always are gonna bounce around provider to provider. So how you can get, take transit and get from one place to another uh, without relying on fixed uh, guideway lines is really important. So this is a pilot that we're launching and we're working on deploying that technology. And so here's a little bit more about that uh, project. Uh, we think it's the right place because it's really solving a lot of problems with our medical district, uh, over 680 acres, near a lot of tourist area that's already congested. It's the right time with a lot of population growth and services growing in that area. And we think it's the right solution, but this is where it's really a system solution where we're having those autonomous vehicles, the connected vehicles with onboard units, uh, pedestrian detection, pedestrian safety is a huge issue in Southern Nevada. And how do we fix that? How do we solve that? And of course, all the analytics. We will keep the analytics. We will share it with our smart city partners across the US to deploy solutions like this. But it's really solving a problem. It's bringing new business to the city. And it's also deploying the right technology at the right time. I certainly thank you all for attending and listening. And I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the summit. Thank you.